And now to an I-Team exclusive. Who can forget this frightening scene from Tribeca back in February? A crane's boom plummeting from the sky in a deadly collapse. And today the city ordered all crane operators to stop what they were doing and secure their equipment because there would be a spot check inspection because of the possibility of powerful winds that could gust over 50 miles per hour. No one wants another tragedy like that. Well, since 2008, there have been five crane collapses in New York City, many of them deadly. A total of 10 people have been killed. And tonight we're getting the behind-the-scenes look at how the city makes sure they are safe. The I-Team's Paisy Chang is on the west side with that. Paisy? And Sevilla, the buildings department said they did do those spot check inspections today, but they didn't have to issue any violations. But we did go behind the scenes. We went along with the buildings department as they inspected a crane. We wanted to know what they look for during an inspection and how that prevents accidents. Well, I'm here to check your license. Um, the I team got an exclusive look at what a crane inspection entails. Inspector Ignacio Jacalone is looking at a crawler crane at Hudson Yards. We check to make sure they stop in a certain position they're supposed to stop. We check his rotation of his cab. We check his counterweight, make sure it matches the charts. Mayor de Blasio called for all crawler cranes to be inspected after the deadly crane collapse in Tribeca. There are 29 of them operating citywide, but nearly 400 of them registered. Generally, cranes are supposed to be inspected annually, but the Department of Building says that could actually amount to several times a year. Anytime a crane is reconfigured or moved, an inspector must be sent out to check it out. This crawler crane is similar to the one that tipped over in Tribeca, just shorter. Moving fast now, he's dropping it really quick. Whoa. It's the video that still haunts us. The towering crane wobbles as it is being lowered, and then it tips. Its 565-foot boom crashes to the ground, crushing cars, killing a pedestrian, and injuring three others. David Wicks was a Harvard-educated finance whiz. He was killed on impact. Here, that night, the wind was already ramping up. Bruce Ehrman and his neighbors were already wary of the massive crane before it crashed. He says he saw the crane move, but there were no construction workers nearby. He went home, and the rest we all know too well. Through a records request, the I-Team learned that there were 124 violations issued to crane operators last year. Among them, defective hoisting equipment, failure to maintain construction equipment, using a crane without a certificate of inspection, and failing to comply with the commissioner's order. A more restrictive guideline right now. Yes. Since the accident, Mayor de Blasio first called for all crawler cranes to stop operating once there is a forecast for wind speeds of 20 miles per hour. But a backlash from the construction industry led the mayor to return to the original wind speed of 30 miles per hour. It's more of a reaction, deal, more political than anything else. Tom Barth, a crane expert who investigated this 2012 crane collapse on the west side, believes lowering wind speeds won't increase safety, but the one thing that will make a difference is requiring crane or lift supervisors to be trained just as well as crane operators. I would like to see um, the superintendents going to school to take these uh, courses to know how to read a load chart and understand the regulations. And you would eliminate a lot of these accidents. Since 2010, New York City has fined and disciplined dozens of crane operators and revoked the licenses of 14 of them. Barth also takes issue with New York City's inspections, which he says should take an entire day. But with only seven crane inspectors, that's a tall task. It just doesn't feel like we're being protected. Crane safety is on Susie Kurz's mind. She lives near several construction projects and cranes. While she understands construction is a way of life in New York City, she wonders if there are too many projects too close to one another. You're sort of forced to walk right through the belly of the beast, and that's scary. And we're New Yorkers. We're used to being tough and dealing with situations that can be a little threatening. Um, but you don't really want to do it every day as part of your life. And the city is still investigating the cause of the Tribeca collapse. We're told the black box on the crane is going to give investigators a lot of information. Also, the crane operator who was involved in that crane collapse, well, he's allowed to continue working pending the outcome of the investigation. We are live from the West Side tonight. Paisy Cheng, News 4, New York. Paisy, thank you. And more investigations mean more answers. So if you have something you think the News 4 I-Team should look into, call us at 1-866-NEWS-244. We can see.